The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This episode is brought to you by NetWealth, market-leading providers of technology, excellent customer support and expertise to help your wealth business thrive. Rated number one for overall satisfaction and value for money by Investment Trends and Chant West's Advised Product of the Year for the last four years, NetWealth is here to support you on your advice technology journey. See wealth differently and visit the website to learn how NetWealth can support your advice and wealth business. Hello and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantinus and joining me here today to deep dive into the Otivo app is, well, he's now famous having been on Channel 9 News talking all things money, is also a significant brand makeover participant uh, and a multiple fintech award winner. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Paul Feeney. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for having me on. Not at all. It's great to have you here. I'm really excited to hear about all things Ativo. Having sort of you and I have talked about what you've been doing for some time, so I can't wait to hear the update. But before we dive in, let's just get to know you a little bit better as a user of technology. What is your most used emoji? Do you use emojis? I do, not not consistently and stuff, but it's it's probably a tie amongst three. It's Ooh. the old thumbs up. And the old hand over the face and the old hands up in the air going, I don't know what's going on at all. Um, I'm to have a bit of fun with them, I suppose. I think I need to use that one more often, actually, if I'm really <laughs> honest. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Don't yeah, ask sure. me. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> exactly. And, hey, if you had to delete every app off your phone, off your smartphone, and just keep three, what do you think you'd keep? Um, I've got to keep Google Maps because I get lost in places when I travel. Um, so me I need too. that. Audible. I like listening to audiobooks. Nice. Uh, so exercising or on the bus or whatever it may be. Nice. And the last one, see, it's either a work thing, either an email or a game. I reckon a game yeah. just, to, just to check out every now and then. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Good plan. I'm a big Google Maps fan as well. In fact, was just watching um, everybody, oh, no, somebody feed Phil um, on the TV on the weekend. And, you know, they're talking about, uh, I think it was Philadelphia and then they're in San Diego and all these places. And I'm like Google Maps tagging well, all these places <laughs> all over the world that one day we'll get there and then I'll know exactly where to eat. So yep. I'm with you. I couldn't do without Google Maps at all. It's funny when it sends you this little thing. I think it's I think it's every quarter. They send you a tracking of where you've been and all the places you've been in the last 90 days. Yeah. It's been a bit boring the last few years, but hopefully you get yeah. better soon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Got to get on our bikes and get moving. Indeed. All righty. Let's dive into Ativo, shall we? So for those listeners who maybe don't know, Ativo was previously Met My Plan, mm-hmm. so hence the brand uh, rejig, which is exciting. Yeah. Um, so to give us a sense of where it sits, so let's go a bit broad and high level initially, where it sits in sort of advice tech space. What category does it live in, you know, and who does it normally get lined up next to? Yeah. So, so look, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make advice available to every Australian who wants it. Um, yeah. So we're not here to compete with advisors. We're more looking at the people who aren't getting advice, but know they want to. Yep. So I look at advice technology and sort of a, a big broad spectrum. Um, you've got what the the press called robo-advisors, uh, mm-hmm. which help people with their investments and so forth. Let's put them down on the far far right-hand side. And they've got all this technology that helps advisors be more efficient in their practice, which is great, and, and they need to be using that technology. So we're very much client-led um, all the way. So the other sort of – at that other, other end of the spectrum from robo-advisors would be the sort of PFM tools, the personal financial management tools that basically yeah, okay. bring all your accounts in, tell you where you've been and where you are today. 
Yep. But for me, the biggest question that everyone wants answered about their finances, regardless of the number of commas in their balance sheet, it comes down to what do I need to do next so me and my family can be better off? Yeah. They're, that's the question that we aim to answer by giving that strategic, holistic advice. So we sit in between the robo-advisor with the investments and the PFM, answering that question of what they should do next. Yeah, cool. Okay, so when you think of who else is doing that, then really, I mean, the banks have played, but they've played in that sort of general advice space, haven't they, where it's really just information. It's not It's not actually looking yeah. at really the uni- unique position and saying, hey, you could do this next. It's sort of just a bit a bit vaguer, to be fair. Yeah. Um, maybe data collect, like it may have got a whole lot of data on you, but that's it's not sort of taking that anywhere else. Um, yeah, and it's not complete data. So they're having yeah. to get... Um, so for me, as an exit, well, I'm still an advisor, I suppose. I'm still a registered advisor with Donativo. <laughs> but for me, if you don't take into account someone's situation, you're actually wasting their time. Mm. You're asking too much of people to give them general information, take that home, one, understand it, two, take it home, implant it across their entire family situation, and then make a well-informed decision. I think we've got enough data about people, and you ask them to answer any sort of gaps in the middle, um, and you can tell them what to do next. So for us, it's all about personal advice. It's reflected of their personal situation. And as a result, we've got our own AFSL and ACL. Uh, yeah, okay. Personal advice on the platform. Yeah, okay, fantastic. So what actually made you build the well, – way back when – what actually made you build the tool? Yeah, so look, I was an advisor in an accounting firm looking after mums and dads and then a perpetual looking after, mm-hmm. I suppose, what we call today the mass affluent, several million dollars sort of net worth. Um, and then Credit Suisse as a private banker looking after some of the AFR rich list. Yep. Um, and it fundamentally came down to that one question that most people had. Um, I was in London, finished, uh, sold an old business that I started over there. I thought, what can I do next? Um, and for me, it's like, well, in a country like Australia, everyone should have the information they need when they need it to make a well-informed decision. And for me, it's like, well, if I can do this stuff on a spreadsheet, surely I can program it yeah. and build a great UX that makes it easy for people to follow. So I went through that sort of side, but but also I'd seen too many people, I suppose, getting advice, and I use the inverted commas around that word, um, from providers that were really looking for themselves rather than, and we're going back quite a few years, right. rather than looking out for the client. Yeah. Um, so for me, our fundamental process here is it's it's making it easy for someone to build a plan themselves, but it's also stripping away any products. Right. My entire philosophy is let's start off with by trying to optimize someone's current situation. Most of the time, you don't need a product to improve someone's financial situation. Right. You just need to to show them which path they should take next, what, what pillar or what bucket they should be putting their next dollar into yeah. to achieve their goals and the things that are important to them. And more often than not, they've got the products they need. I mean, let's be honest, there's no perfect product. So let's no. get them to use the ones they've got now efficiently. Yeah. And that's how we focus on on the advice that we give. And so I'd imagine then a lot of it does come down to behaviours too, because ultimately we're, we're our own, as human beings, we're our own worst enemies, aren't we? So <laughs> invariably we get in our own way. You know, we're so. strange creatures, I tell right? you. Uh, <laughs> we are very, very odd people. Um, but it's also because you're unique as well. You, you've got different mm-hmm. things you want to do. And for us, we've stayed clear of trying to set up rails of journeys for people to go down right for us someone's situation determines the journey that they go on um, because everyone starts from a different point and they've all got a different end goal Um, in my world when their data is different their experience is different Um, and everyone's data is slightly different Mm. yes it could be similar but it's it's allowing that and the next next piece of information they provide us then shapes that journey along uh, for that individual and i think it's really important in the sort of new world that we acknowledge the fact that they're all different. I think when you look in the past and even still today with some financial Mm -hmm. services marketing, like if you're not in one of the main generational categories and you don't fit the picture of who they have of somebody in that category, it's, it's actually quite alienating. And I think it fundamentally ignores the fact that the choices available to us now are so broad that therefore who we are will be particularly unique, you know, because yep. we're all going to make different choices. You know? oh, exactly. And at different times in our lives and that mm. sort of stuff. And we may follow a similar path at different points of time, but it's going to be that little bit different again. And, and so that's why you've got the ability now to do this and have a unique journey for each individual uh, that you're talking to, uh, you know, through the virtual door like us or face-to-face for traditional advisors. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And so that's the, so that's the public user. Yeah. Um, and the end user, then, you know, I've heard you say before, and you've partnered with advice practices that have sort of utilized the the app 
I, I'm yeah. guessing for clients or for kids of clients. Talk us through how you've seen that work for advisors or or other financial services professionals. Yeah, so we've got about a dozen or so practices at the moment. So we rebranded to Ativo at the start of this year. So from around about March onwards, we've gone out there and we said, well, look, we think there's three distinct channels that can really utilize our platform. It's direct to individuals, mm -hmm. and that's a subscription model. We'll come back to that later, but it's basically a price of coffee. It's a coffee a week is the subscription price. Um, we continue to work with the employers, so the likes of Rio Tinto, Ernst & Young, Medibank, even Oztrack, uh use it for their staff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then it's the financial services firms that we're really starting to gain a lot more traction on. And and a big part of the platform redevelopment the last 12 months has been focusing on that. So as you said, the advice practices, what we assumed is that they'd be looking at this. If you're an advisor, uh, like you are, like I am, you're in this game because you fundamentally want to help someone. And the last thing you really want to do is say, sorry, I can't help you. You've, you've got to go away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is now a tool that lets anyone start. So advice practices now, instead of having 100 or 150 clients, whatever people have, you could have 2,000 clients. Right. But maybe you're talking to 50 of them really consistently, another 50 a lot more regularly. Then the, the rest of them, the data, i.e. their situation, tells you when to reach out to them. Right. Because the platform will, will, will come through and you could type on a Monday morning, Find in the advisor pool that we built, find my clients who need $300,000 or more of life cover. Here's the list. Call them up. And it's basically, you're not selling to a client. You're just saying, hey, it's great using the online tool. How's it going? Um, you've discovered that you need more life cover. We have a solution for that. Would you like a hand? Yeah. yeah. So it's making advice be much more proactive at the point in time that the individuals identify the need themselves. But also what we're finding with the practice as well is the clients can click on a button, I need help. You never get a warmer lead as an advisor if you've got yeah. someone building a plan and saying, help me, um, give me a hand. Um, and so we're doing that. And, and people, we thought they'd be using it for their, the clients that they can't, I suppose, service economically right. because the revenue is not quite there or because their personal situation doesn't call for it at the moment. But we're also now finding that clients are using it to help with the PY for the professional year um, advisors. But also some of them are now using it. Some of, Gee, this is a scenario tool in real time that right. you can show them the impact of changing when or on a tire in a matter of seconds, well, this is what it's going to mean to the income or changing the income you want to earn. So people are using it in meetings uh, with some of their top-level clients as well. So, and you just sort of, you skated over it, but I think it's a really interesting concept is for professional year staff mm. to have, like, this is sort of their advice buddy, right? It's this, it's this yeah. tool next to them that can help them learn the experience people go through in pro probably a, what's lovely is a structured way because it's got structure in it, yep. um, but not in a siloed way which means they're only seeing the same type of people over and over. So um, that's interesting to me that it could be something that um, gives them a bit of a leg up um, and they can sort of participate more fully maybe a bit earlier than they might have otherwise. Yeah, exactly. And, and they react to that individual situation because yeah. um, like, it might be insurance, it might be debt, it might be something else that's changed or changed in investments inside their super fund. And they can deal with that um, yeah. along with another advisor to help them along the way. And it's an interesting concept just sort of thinking through what it can be in an advice practice is there's a lot of talk in marketing, particularly sort of outside our game, but um, marketing where you have, you know, the nurturing email series, you know, where they talk about, well, this, this is a nurturing series where you're just trying to keep somebody warm. What's interesting of what, what you're describing for a practice of this tool is it's nurturing these clients in the truest way, meaning they get development while they're utilizing it, but also they get to a point when therefore you can help them even further. So it's a... It's a true nurture in that yeah. sense, um, which is a bit exciting. You know, I think that's the real benefit, I think, of the Ativa mm. platform. I mean, technically, we're a digital financial planning practice. Yeah. But the real benefit, it's an engagement platform that enables financial services firms to have a deeper engagement individually with their clients and then interact with them at the point in time that they know they can add extra value. Right. And they can step in. Maybe it's on that ad hoc basis. And eventually, we incubate those sort of clients to become that full face-to-face -face traditional advice clients. Um, and that's our goal. And we hand off at that point. We've built a handoff points all the way through the platform where a client can reach out or an advisor can step in and say, hey, great, looks like we can help you a little bit more than what you're doing there. Would you like to have a chat? Fantastic. And so in the practices you've already sort of working alongside with, do you think there's a type that it works well for versus ones that it doesn't? Like, have you noticed any pattern in that or theme that that can sort of help somebody work out if it's if they're going to have any challenges sort of bringing in a tool like this in? Yeah, I think it comes down to it's a hard one to 
I don't think we've got enough clients to really find a, a real pattern. Yeah. What appears to be happening now is it's it's people who are just wanting to to innovate to make sure they can give advice to more people. Right. Um, and that's what seems to be driving the early adopters that are coming on with us at the moment. Yeah, fair enough. Hmm. And so in terms of then the actual experience for the end user, I'm imagining that's evolved a lot. You know, what what were some lessons maybe either you didn't expect or you guys had to learn the hard yards in terms of that user experience? Because I'm, you know, all of us with this financial background, when you take a first cut at any of this stuff, it's all about the numbers, right? And we're yeah. all about the not realizing most people don't like numbers, you know. So, so, <laughs> so how did that yeah. evolve over time for you guys in terms of what you, you know, the user sees and how they interact? Yeah. So there's probably what 150 to 250 data points you need to build out a full plan. Mm-hmm. We don't ask someone that many questions at once. Um, we ask four basic questions, and they can put in numbers or just I'm um, in this way or that way or, or whatever I've got. So they don't have to go as as deep straight away. Yeah. And we've broken someone's financial life down into to four distinct pillars. Um, and it's really about hey, let's build a plan to help you manage your debt. Yeah. Let's look at what your aspirations are. What are you saving for? Kids education, car, wedding, holiday, home, whatever it may be. Then let's have a look now at what your retirement's going to be looking like um, and what your goals are there. Let's take a look at any investments you've got. So that's sort of the four and a half pillar, maybe the fifth pillar eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also let's see what your income's going to look like in retirement. And even if you're going to get the age pension from the government, if so, how much and when. Yeah. And then the last one, what's your backup plan? Just in case the unforeseen happens, what personal insurance should you have in place? And so we only ask information of a, of a user or a client at the point in time that we need it to progress and give them the next step for the next right, step okay. the recommendation. Yeah, okay. Um, but someone could come in and just do superannuation and that's it and still learn a great deal and control that or just debt or savings, whatever it may be. Yeah. But then they get those little nudges from us that say, look, a couple more minutes and uh, <laughs> a bit more information and you'll have a full plan. Uh, yeah. We'll really show you how to be better off. And we have this headline. I think one of the great learnings we've had is that the benefit – of seeing a financial advisor is 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the track. So we have a headline figure. It's like, hey, Peter, you're on track to be better off by $500,000 between now and retirement. And that's instead of doing nothing as opposed to all the advice that we'll keep on providing you between now and then. Yeah. Like you know, increasing your debt payments, getting a better mortgage, changing your investment options, or all those sort of things inside your super fund result in that sort of out- outcome for the client. And the interesting thing about that, it's so powerful, and particularly is the reality, is when you don't act on these things in any way, and I don't mean necessarily going to an advisor, just sort of taking charge of your Mm -hmm. finances, it's actually a downward drift. This is not a a flat baseline. This is something that drifts down over time. And so the gap is is even wider, you know, like it's it's, it's massive. And it's something that never really, I've got to be saying, Honestly, occurred to me until I watched. I think it was. I think it's Simon Bowen. He's the models method guy, and he sort of got a way of describing that. That you know, every day you put this off, it's getting worse. Like yeah. this gap's getting You're going worse. Down the other side of the mountain, aren't you? Really? Right. You know, and how do I get down here? Exactly. <laughs> you know. And so I love the idea of little steps that they can just keep on taking because that's yeah. how we all do stuff. Boot camp in its most dream version almost never works, right? We yeah. all know, we've all done it and it just, yeah. you have a heart attack and then you stop forever and then you might start, you know, something small. So I think this idea of really guiding people, um, yeah. I think is just, it feels more collaborative. It feels, and it feels honestly less condescending in that sense. It's not, ooh, us smart finance people, you know, complex, complex. Yeah. It's come on, just, this is the next thing. How about we do it? You know? And I think that's the, that's the real heart of why we did the rebrand. It's really bringing it back to making it much more personable, yeah. making it conversational. Yeah. Um, and we, we had a great branding guy come in, Rob Morrison. Um, he came on and, and basically did the entire thing uh, from scratch. And it's the UX sort of journey yes. that we go through. And for us, it's like, is this going to add value to an individual? If not, get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, it's really trying to minimize it. And and the, and Nathan and the other team, if it's here, that's what keeps them up awake at night is, well, how do I make that even easier for someone? And that work's never going to finish. No. Uh, it just simply never will. But also what we do is when we do get information, the, the users and clients, they get feedback on the screen. So you – you answer three questions about your home loan, all of a sudden you see a line seeing how much faster you're paying it off than what the bank wants you to do it yeah. and how much you're saving. So you're giving that feedback as they're providing information about themselves, they get that feedback. And and most people can talk about themselves. They're okay about that. Yeah. Um, and we get people coming on first 
about eight to ten minutes. And they use round figures. And sometimes mm. they link their bank accounts and we get the rich data from their accounts and all that sort of stuff. About 40% of people do that. But then people come back another time, another seven to eight minutes, and you start to see precise figures coming in. Uh, that's when they're starting to really pay attention and get in there. And by that time, they've built a full plan. And it's, you know, that digging, I mean, that's a great step already. The fact they've yeah. gone and looked. <laughs> like, yeah, go and become find it. aware of their situation. Exactly. Yeah. You know, dig out that login you once had for that <laughs> thing and go and check it out. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a great start. So in terms of integration, so clearly, I'm a, well, sorry, not clearly, I'm guessing that data feeds are a thing so that then, you know, updated balances or stuff like that can come through. Is that correct? Yeah, we get data from data or data. I never know. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, I, always, I think I always switch it up. Yeah. Um, we get it from one of three sources. Yeah? So we can link with the CRM of a financial service institution. Mm-hmm. So the information their client knows about them is already built in. So imagine yeah. you, you know, I'm with ANZ. You log on ANZ. Hey, Paul, we care about your financial well-being to the extent that we've pre-built a personal financial plan for you. Click here to activate it. brings all the data across. Now all you have to do is make sure it's correct, fill in the gaps, and away you go. And the way they fill in the gaps is either by declaring the data themselves, like you would in the old pen and paper fact find yep. that I had when I was a personal advisor, yep. or you can link data from your financial institutions. We use a firm called BASIC. So okay. we're accredited CDR recipients, and it's a mixture between open banking and screen scraping because not all institutions are using it at the moment. Mm-hmm. And the 40 or so percent that do that, all of a sudden you've created a living plan. Mm. Because at 2 a.m. every day, we update the transactions, the balances, and all that sort of stuff. And to the extent of stuff that we're developing out, it'll be like, hey, Peter, great news. You got paid yesterday. We noticed, though, there was 500 bucks left in your account. Why don't you take 400 put that in your credit card or in your super, or your offset, or your kid's education, whatever's right for you as an individual. Mm-hmm. The other 100 bucks, go and have fun with your family and friends. Yeah. So you become that real-time coach for someone that's related exactly to their personal situation at that point in time. And we're so used to notifications. I mean, people are now running entire, you know, fitness programs um, from a phone. So, you know, I think it's probably underutilized. I think those notifications are something our industry, we're so used to information, analyze, 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 days, 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 give back result. And it's like, they've lost interest at that point. So the more it can be living and breathing and, and feels like you're with them in that journey. Um, yep. you know, then then you can become a part of what they're trying to achieve, which is, which is exciting and, and fabulous. So, so that's the sort of data stuff. So, what what other sort of integrations or or maybe not feeds, but I know I mentioned. Um, I thought I saw SharePoint. Was that something that I saw that you guys work alongside? Yeah, share site. Site. Sorry, yeah. share site. Yeah, yeah. Share site. So, share site is like um, basic, but it's just for your brokerage accounts. Okay. Perfect. So we can get a data fit of all your brokerage accounts, so even in a self-managed super fund or investments outside of super, whatever brokerage account from Comsec through to all the uh, the new ones like a Stake and Unhedged and all those guys and and Perla and everyone else and Southwells. So that then comes in as well uh, as a direct feed. So we get to see the changing investments that are coming through. Okay. So that's in there. We're in the process of, of course, talking with Paul Campbell at Zeppo um, yep. to be able to link in with Zeppo. Um, we have done an integration with Salesforce. Okay. Um, and we've also done integration with X-Plan in the past. Um, so X-Plan and Salesforce, everyone's instance is different. Um, so it's <laughs> never really a plug and play for those sort of no. things. But it, became, it basically can be done. You basically want to find where is a true and trusted source of the data that you don't want to be edited. Mm-hmm. And then when you do gather information, hopefully that can come back into your system to make your practice more efficient when you do need to react to a client face-to-face, whether it's one-off or ongoing um, either way. And I think for the what you're talking about there, because it's designed for people that you aren't necessarily doing the other intensive advice for, then yeah. really it's about flags, isn't it? That's what yeah. that's what advisors need is just the flags, you know, and so it's that trigger. Hey, somebody needs to go and speak to this person, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. You I mean, know, like, so here's a little secret. I mean, financial planning is not rocket science. No. <laughs> but we have to take into a lot of information and a lot of variables plus the regulations and everything else. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of variables we have to take into account. So in our head, when you're an advisor, you're having a chat with a client, you're asking information. In your head, the decision tree is starting to take shape. Yeah. So what we've built with Ativa, if I can use that analogy, it's like a smart machine. It's building out an appropriate decision tree, for the lack of a better term, for that individual client. Yeah. So then every single person has that unique journey because their tree looks a little bit different yeah. and whether the path they want to go down. Um, and, and I think that's where advice is going to go. And 
for me, when we look at that quality of advice review, mm. um, I hope the word quality doesn't get lost mm. um, in it all. But to me, to if you, to give access to more Australians, from where I from my perspective, it needs to be digitally led to start off with, but with handoff points that someone can reach out to an advisor when they wish to, knowing full well there may be additional fees involved in that because you've got to pay for an expert's time, which is yeah. fair enough. Um, but they can then make the decision if they're able to pay for that or not, yeah. or the advisor can come back to them um, and interact with them uh, as they wish. And even, I mean, I could see an offer that sort of um, has already not priced in, but sort of disclosed the upgrade, you know, so the, hey, you're on this package and this is what's going to happen and this is yeah. what you do. And you get these sort of, and you get to, you know, some maybe one to many sort of stuff they could take part in and, you know, all the great, great, great. And then if you need to escalate, then this is the charge for that. And they just know that up front, you know, so and I think. What, yeah. no, sorry, it's okay, you're off there, but that's what practices are starting to do. They're mm. looking at how we package up our subscription model putting that, but adding extra things to it, whether it's briefings or whatever it be or a call once a year or whatever it may be, they're coming up with their own package. Um, but they have that client-led stuff to begin with. I mean, one of the advisors sort of looking at this now and they're saying, well, imagine if I, I get a referral, we send out their version of Ativo, uh, their co-branded version of what it may be, um, and then two days before the meeting, they go online and see the person hasn't filled anything out. We'll send them an email and say, look, hey, looks like you haven't had any time yet. Why don't we postpone the meeting until you've had the opportunity to go through and provide your information so we can make sure that first meeting is not a compliant data collection driven meeting, but one that I can add value. How yeah. about we do it next week instead? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which then adds even more value to their time as well. Uh, so they can really focus on the stuff where they add significant value. And I think the the thing we'll just need to get clever about, and we're already seeing it, we've gone fully virtual as a practice, is you've got to interject very early them seeing you at least in video. And that can be just a general video. It doesn't need to be unique yeah. to them. But if they can lock eyes on you at least, hear your style, the way you talk, like all those sort of things can ease somebody into them, be comfortable to complete the details in the app before the meeting. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah. so all of that, you know, is is we just need to get a bit smarter about understanding the way people make decisions, the way they act, um, and what you need to do to ease them into that type of service that doesn't rely on the sit down in front of you, if somebody brings in the coffee sort of thing, which all is completely valid, but it's not going to work for everybody. Um, and no. it's it's not going to work for every practice. <laughs> no, it definitely won't. And there, there's, there's always going to be a need for face-to-face -face advice. There's always going to be someone out there who wants someone to be there and hold their hands and who can afford to pay for that professional service. Yeah. But let's make sure the other four or five million Australians who say they want advice can access it so they make those better decisions and they can be better off. Yeah. Now, in terms of, I do have a question. Demographically, mm. is I'm, I'm – as, like lots of the listeners, I think will be going, oh, well, that's just all going to be millennials. They're really going to like that. Um, I'm expecting it's not maybe not quite as concentrated as that, that there's no. quite a broader demographic that will use a tool like this. Yeah, we've got people from teenagers to late 70s using yeah. it. So they're the entire bell curve. But where it really sits, it's late 20s to very young 40s. Yeah, okay. Um, and they are the mass affluent. They, they're earning over $100,000 a year. Yeah. Uh, they've got over $100,000 in their super already. So – they, they are professionals who are working and, and also, yep. you know, tradies and, and, and so forth. But it's it's not all millennials. It's, no. it's people who – we call them financial seekers, people who have taken at least one or two steps to take control of their finances. Yeah. So maybe they've read Barefoot Investor. They listen to blogs. Maybe they've invested a couple of thousand dollars in the market. But yeah. they know that they want to take a step. They just don't know where to go yet. Um but also those demographics may be well impacted by the type of organizations that are using it. The employers that are using our platform already right. will have a big impact. We haven't really gone out there and marketed this to individuals. Yeah. That being said, we're, we're getting dozens a week just subscribing, just finding us somehow, uh, which yeah. is great. But, yeah, I think it's a – one thing I've really learned here is that you have all these assumptions and <laughs> they do make an ass out of you, so to speak. <laughs> do, don't they? We've learned that too. We've had um... – you know, we have a client come on board and now that we're virtual, I'm like, oh, there's no way, you know, the oldies aren't going to be for that. And I can't tell you the number of them. Oh, it's such a relief. I don't have to go into town. This is yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think it's similar with an app. I mean, as horrible as COVID has been and, and maybe will be for a bit, the thing it's taught everybody is how to use a QR code yeah. and the fact that most of us now have a smartphone. Yep. Uh, and the thing about an older demographic too is they've got less apps on their smartphone. So yeah. if there is an app to go on it, it's probably going to have pride, pride of place right there on the front screen, you know. So, oh, exactly. 
So I think we, you just can't second guess that stuff. All you do need to do is be a bit more understanding of the process, you know, help them get started. But aside from that, um, I think we can't underrate the fact that, that we've all learnt. You know, we all now know that these things are possible and add value. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I just, uh, I think we all sort of need to take that, like you say, stop assuming and just, I, and I like that idea of the financial seeker, meaning it's behaviors that define this. And those behaviors could be for a demographic, but it also could be, you know, somebody in a completely different age range. It's just that exactly. they're exhibiting the same behaviors. Yep. Um, yeah. 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 And interests. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So what's on the development? So what's coming up, you know, what's on the path yeah, going yeah. forward and what's like, woohoo, I'd love to do this, but we're nowhere near that yet. Yeah. Look, so our ultimate goal is to make sure another one to two million Australians have got advice. Yeah. I want to be the largest provider of advice in this country, whether it's white label or co-brand or whatever it is, but because I fundamentally believe and the whole team fundamentally believes that when you give people information they need when they need to make a well-informed decision, they're going to be better off. Yeah. And more people who use it, their community is going to be better off, society is going to be better off, and the guys down in Canberra can start talking about some other things because uh, <laughs> society ends up being better off because yeah. we're all making better decisions. Yeah? That's finally where we want to get to. We've got a, I think the last development list thing was well over 100 sort of different items that we're looking to develop. But it's really looking at a couple of things like life events. Something's happened. Yeah. I've been made redundant. Unfortunately, there's an illness. Have you got a new child coming along the way? Mm -hmm. um, you know, all those sort of things. What's that going to do to my financial life? To be able to put that into there as well, because they all have monetary impacts mm. as well. So we've got to take that into account, but also at the point in times they're trying to do that. And then a really dynamic, a little bit different, but a dynamic net wealth sort of calculator that yep. tracks it on a daily basis um, and looking at why it's changed and what are the things that have impacted that. And this can be your behavior. It could be also other things that are happening externally that are impacting your wealth as well. So having those sort of things there as well. Um, we are starting to now work with superannuation funds mm -hmm. uh, to enable them to give advice to more than, say, 1% of their membership, which I think yeah. would be a big game changer for those guys when that gets there. Um, ultimately, I see financial advice like this being ubiquitous. Any sort of financial institution that you deal with, if it doesn't have a plan for you, it's like, well, you're not really helping me. I'm going mm. somewhere else where I can. Mm. That's where I think it's ultimately going to become, um, whereby you're about to purchase something or you're doing something or whatever. Maybe it's like, let me check if that's the, the right thing I should be doing now. Or or even when you've got a hangover on Saturday morning, you're waking up, you get a little nudge from your phone going, big night last night, hey? It's okay. <laughs> we can sort things out. It's all good to celebrate. <laughs> Um, but you can have all those sort of things. It's it's utilizing that information, that data, you know what I mean, to, to be able to go out there and help people um, stay on track of where they want to go. But it's it's never judging someone. It's mm. only ever nudging them. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, judging yeah. doesn't help. And it, in fact, cause, causes people to just put their head in the sand and they ignore it, you know, yeah. whereas if they consciously want to spend $1,000 on a jacket for their dog or whatever the thing is that they desperately oh. want and need, um, then just do it consciously. You know, if and, someone and, loves coffee, don't tell them to have one less coffee a day. They're going yeah. to kick you. Yeah. Don't tell me I can't have that wine. I like yeah. wine too much. Right. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And ultimately, I, I, where I'd really like to see something that technology like this go is that it comes along and says, hey, Paul, you should change your investment to this. You should transfer money in your card to here, and you should increase your payments here. Having a button, and this is where open banking would really, really, when it finally gets there, having a button saying, do that for me, please. Mm. And it just gets executed. Yeah. Straight off the bat. Um, so it's just so easy for people to manage their finances. Yeah, because the friction from realisation right. to action is huge and and so many people fall off at that point. You yeah. know, and it's just too things, hard. There are certain things we don't do on the platform because there's too much friction. We Like we're not out there comparing two super funds. Right. Because you know? to make someone move from that to another one, that's a lot of work for someone. <laughs> Um, until we can automate that, we'll get there. But what we want to do is make sure you're using the super fund that you've got right now to its best capacity. Mm. Make those extra contributions and see what it's going to do. Is that the right investment option for you? There might be one that's cheaper. Mm. Um, even when you look at your super, your future, they look at the worst performing investment options. They use the word fund, which is not actually correct. No. They're only looking at investment options. So, well, let's look at a different investment option inside the same fund. Yep. And then also how you can get your personal insurance sorted inside that fund as well. Because seventy five percent of Australians don't have the cash flow to pay for insurance outside of that. Yeah. Um, so it's getting richer and richer. Ultimately, where I want to get to is that you say, "Hey, you could do better on your mortgage. Click here. There's a button here that will help go straight to a mortgage broker or go to the one you want, 
and realize that uh, straight off the bat. I don't yeah. want any referral fees. I want to give it back to the client. Yeah. Uh, but basically put them front and center of everything. That's that's ultimately where we're going. And be great for Rotivo to be in another country one day as well. Ooh, that's exciting. <laughs> I'll be on that. I'll be on that uh, research trip for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Is there anything else we've missed in terms of what it covers or what it can do, particularly for advisors? Yeah. Look, for advisors, it's really incubating the clients for you. It, it takes you through. It stops short of, you know, if you've got trust structures and assets overseas and all that sort of stuff, you need someone there to look after. Mm. But I I think we, sometimes I think we do ourselves a disservice because it makes it look so simple and easy. Mm. Um, and therefore people think, oh, it, it doesn't have real advice, it doesn't have complicated advice. But it really does go through and say, so, well, how, this is what you can do. Because let me take a step back, I suppose. Financial planning wealth management is fundamentally driven by two things. It's the regular cash flow you've got and any lump sum cash you've got. Mm-hmm. Where should you put it, given them what you and your family are trying to do? Yeah. yeah. So that's what drives the whole thing. We look at that and say, right, we never recommend someone use all their cash flow because everyone underestimates how much they spend. Yeah. Um, but it'll come through and it'll say, well, look, you can increase your payments on your home loan and also look to optimize your home loan to get a better deal. That could save you hundred grand. i am just using numbers for the sake of it. Mm. Um, but that's quite often what it is. Um, and then also looking at your superannuation. We've got someone, we've got a data fit from Chant West that's got every single super fund that's open to new and existing members. Um, so you type in the super fund, comes up. Then it's got all the investment options inside that super fund. So you tell us what your current investment options are, individual or multiple. We then look at that and we compare, looking at the past 30 years, look at fees, look at volatility of your age to retirement and then life expectancy and say, well, actually, we're trying to find, and we don't use this language, um, but this is really for advisors listening, is we find the investment option inside their current fund that's closer to the efficient frontier. Right. That gives them that better return, that risk-reward, but also look at the lower fees because that's going to add more money for the client. Yeah. And then it either comes says, great news, you're in the right one, or, hey, here's one that you should consider. Yeah. Um, and quite often people are in the – uh, in their 20s and they're in they're in conservative. It's like, well, no, no, you've got the opportunity to push that up because you can't touch this stuff for a while. Yeah. Um, so when you combine all that, and then we also say, well, how much more contributions you can give in because we know what your cash flow is. So it's going through all of that and produces an SOA. I think at the moment it's, it's under 20 seconds uh, is what it takes us to produce one. Um, and then on the back end, we've got the advisor portal where the advisors can search all the data, see the SOAs, they can be on the phone with the client and they can see exactly what the client's seeing at the same time that the client's seeing it. Um, and then they can make a change and the audit trail on the back end, from a compliance perspective, we know who entered that data. Was it the advisor or was it the client? And yeah. what day they actually did it. And so you can come back and say, well, and then you can see all exactly what the clients have done. The funny thing is, I think it's less than 1% of actual clients who are using the platform have clicked on the download SOA button. Yeah, okay. Because the SOA is not the advice. The SOA is the record yep. of the advice. The advice is given on the screen. So we do send the link to the SOA to the clients. But we also then at the end of each day, if anyone's had a play around with their account, we automatically produce an SOA and keep it hidden in the background. Um, so the advisor can always go and see those ones. Yeah, um, We can go back and, and do that sort of stuff. But, but ultimately, I suppose, any message to advisors is that we're in this business because we want to help people, fundamentally. Uh, we're developing a platform here that we want to work with advisors on, uh, but fundamentally, we, we just want to get it in front of more people. Yeah. Because the more of them get advice, the better off they are, the more clients advisors are going to have in the end as well. Um, and the advisor numbers, are going, they're going to turn around eventually. Uh, yeah. Well, look, right. and I, I think we can't, for too long as an industry, and really I'm talking broader than financial advice, I'm talking financial services here, yeah. we've ignored that mathematically cash flow is the single biggest contributor to any outcome. Like we've yep. just ignored it. I yep. mean, in, in a world, I mean, Australia, you know, as, a, as somebody in Australia, you, you've got like super guarantee. So you're already forced to put some money away for the future. So yep. already that's a behavior that's forced on you yep. that otherwise you might not have done. So in that sense, that's already a tick, right? So that's yep. already part way along. What hasn't happened is the other side, you know, so yep. it's this everyday stuff. And it has a, a such a significant impact in comparison it you know it's it's something we've just blindly ignored and i and not out of malice this is just you know the industry has grown out of an attachment to say insurance and super it's just a natural thing um, yeah. that i think we need to shift and pivot we need yeah. to because that's where the value is for them 
Yep. It's huge. Like, so imagine if you can then say to a client, so imagine if you could so save 5% of your expenses. So they spend two grand a month. If you could save, find $100 somewhere, you find it. We're not going to judge you where you get it from. This is what it would do to you. This is what it would mean for your financial health in 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time. Because um, you've got to bring back, and that's the great thing about these sort of always on, this living sort of plan concept, whereby you can see all straight away what's the short, medium, and long-term impact of any decision that you make right now. It's right. a big scenario tool. Yeah. Uh, they're playing around with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But just that powerful little thing. So make it 50 bucks extra a month, whatever it may be, and just see what that does for your financial outcomes uh, between now and, and when you wish to retire. And um, to, I mean, it's interesting to thinking that through to have actually got people to the point. I mean, imagine where you've got them to the point where they're thinking about you know, maybe not lay buying, but, you know, buying something and then, oh, you know, pay it, pay it off over time and they enter it like by habit. Well, I'll just put it in the app and they can see that impact. Yeah. You know, that before they've taken action, like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is a moment of, wow, this makes sense to me. And that's what the users are telling us. They're like, wow, now I understand how the tax stuff and the super works and, and what role that plays in my life. Yeah. And wow, I can see what if I just put the money there instead of there. It's it's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, it's very gratifying when you get that sort of feedback. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because it's, yeah, after the fact, you know, the account, accounting industry definitely, financial advice is probably broadly in that category too, where it's all reporting after it's done. <laughs> So yeah. look here's in the, the year you had. Yeah. Keep on looking at the rear vision mode to see where yeah. we've been. Let's, yeah. let's proactively see, well, if we take these steps, this is where we'll end up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, oh, it's so exciting. Um, so, all right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about our TiVo, then we've definitely got the website link in the show notes um, and including – Paul's LinkedIn details. So be sure to reach out. I'm sure, you know, he'd love to point you in the direction of what I imagine are things that advisors can either log into or download to sort of check yeah. it out and, and get a better feel. Um, I'm everyone sure that- gets, Everyone gets a one month free access anyway. So have a play. And I've got yeah. pretty thick skin. Let me know what you love <laughs> and what you hate, what you'd like to see improved, because that's the only way you can make it better. Absolutely. And and an advisor's, you know, input to that is such a different angle. You'll be getting lots of um client feedback. And so what a nice balance, you know, yeah, be getting some right. feedback from from advisors too. So I you know, I'm with you. I plan on doing that myself, um, to go and check it out again. It's been a long time since I've taken a look, so I can't wait. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, Paul. And, you know, I really think it's awesome that there's tools out there like this that can hit the mass public. This is where we can add value to all of those people we just simply can't get to. So kudos on the hard work and please, please, please keep on going. <laughs> we will be. Off. We're not stopping yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. So have you already had maybe a play with Ativo or, you know, you might have um, implemented in the practice or, you know, maybe family member maybe needed something and you recommended it. Um, please share your insights on the XY community platform. You know, I'd love to hear what you think. Anybody who's maybe seen it over time, worked, you know, utilizing Map My Plan, see it change. We'd all love to hear all of that and see, you know, hear what you have to say and, and any insights you can give. And in terms of, look, my thoughts on this, I think it's so easy to see an app like this as competition for our services as financial advisors. And you know what? In a world where there were 100,000 plus financial advisors in Australia, well, then perhaps that would be the case, right? Perhaps then we'd be fighting over every last client. But the truth is that there simply isn't enough of us right now to serve all of the Australian public's needs. It's just the fact. And in many instances, what they need can be kicked off with a tool like this, right? This can make some serious progress for them. So I'd really encourage us all to sort of come at these tools with an approach of abundance, right? How can I do what I do and provide this to people? How might this be one of the many tools of my trade, right? What experience can I build that is on top of this, right? That really almost amplifies the value of a tool like this. You know, if we can do that well, then we're really going to see the impact we all can collectively have as an industry. It'll take off, you know, and it'll be measurable and wonderful. So, you know, let's use that approach of abundance and, and sort of celebrate that there's tools out there that somebody who maybe isn't going to approach an advisor directly can get access to. Now, we are 14 episodes in. Can you believe this? It's gone so quickly. So the regular listeners of the podcast will know that right about now, 
I profile for you something that caught my eye, you know, a tool, a piece of software or an app that I think might be of interest. You know, this isn't just a means of adding a bit of extra value, which I really hope it does. <laughs> I hope that you've got some value out of these. But what I'm also hoping we can each develop is this habit of curiosity, of being willing and able to see new things and just imagine how they might apply in our business or even in our personal lives. So to that end, today's Curiosity Corner app that caught my eye is Book Like a Boss. Now, you can find it at booklikeaboss.com. And this basically automates your scheduling and selling of your services with customizable branded booking pages that make it really easy for your clients to book in time and pay for you. Um, This sort of, you know, basically gets you really organized and sets up a streamlined booking process that's really reliable and it's dead simple, right, for us, but also for the consumer. And you just don't need to have this sort of massive PhD in tech, right? So it's actually um, easy easy to use. Now, this is sort of beyond a scheduling app. I think most of us have probably looked at or use a scheduling app. This is, this is something where the result is a slick, easy to use, and I'm betting highly convertible appointment booking and payment collections webpage. So this would be perfect for you if you have a thriving new client funnel and are starting to charge for first appointments. You know, even for them to come in for that first appointment, there's a fee for that and you want them to have sort of paid for that before you see them. Yeah, this would be a great way to do that. And it actually looks like it could smoothly work with teams of advisors to do that. Um, so I'd encourage you to check it out and let me know what you think. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And we've already had some wonderful interest um, in Jenny Pierce and my niche down and scale up masterclass. In fact, we will almost certainly be running more than just one um, in Sydney in early 2023. I'm betting it's going to go other locations out of Sydney and out of New South Wales. So if you're keen, please reach out to me on LinkedIn, direct message me to secure your spot in the queue. You can find me at LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. 